team. They have seven players averaging 15 or more points per game. Anyone on this roster can be called up to that starting position. It's that cohesive top eight, Angel. They're looking for that starting rotation with a few bench players. But as you can see, it's the fifth starting lineup today. So still working on that process for Pitt. As we mentioned too, Dejanette Harris was someone that we featured. She is going to be coming off of the bench as this is the fifth starting lineup for Pittsburgh. And Ball State starts off with the ball. You see their starting five. That is something that has not changed for the Cardinals. And they come up in their first possession with the turnover. Quick pass on the inside. That's knocked away. Amber Brown trying to see if she could thread the needle. Hit starting lineup. Amy Hayford, another freshman, coming in. Just giving a lot to the Panthers. You can see the round about Amber Brown is the only player on this roster that has started all games this season. And right off the bat, Angel, what I see, Ball State is experiencing the athleticism and speed of an ACC school. I mean, it's different when you're playing an in-state rival in a smaller school like IUPUI. You're seeing right off the bat, Ball State having to adjust immediately to the size and speed that Pitt brings. That foul is going to go against Kiefer. So Leah Tuking will step to the line. She has a very strong story that we will get more into throughout the broadcast. And as we continue to recognize V Week, Pitt is also celebrating their second annual ASL Deaf Awareness Game. So as you saw in the open, a couple of players wearing the warm-ups that have Pitt and sign language on their shirts. Knocks down both, and so put on the board first. So for Ball State, you know, you mentioned the consistency in the starting lineup, and they have a very interesting <clears throat> offense uh, and how they identify their players between backs, crashers, and keys. We'll get more into that as it goes along, but you see five players outside the Archangel. <laughs> Archangel. It's all about the 5 on 0 <laughs> offense for Ball State. I like it. If you roll with it, I will too yeah. as well. So I'm another a punter, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> another empty possession for Ball State, but you can see how their emphasis so far Ooh. has been trying to get it inside. But Pitt said we can do it a little bit better. A nice dish on the inside. Back-to-back -back buckets are the first bucket for Leah Tuking. Love the finish and the find. Uh, Marley, number 11. Marley Washington's for Pitt. Inserting herself into the starting lineup and, and just a great bullet pass inside. And if Lafayne could not connect on that mid-range shot. And so Ball State still looking for their first points as we're approaching that first two minutes of the ball game. Another look on the inside. This one goes to Amber Brown. She dishes it out. Working baseline. And so we'll get another free throw for the Panthers. Here's the opposing coach, Brady Sally, his 18th coaching season. But I think the most impressive thing about Coach Sally is that he does not shy away from taking on Power 5 schools. He talked about the respect that he has for Coach Lance and just continuing to schedule them. They've already had four wins against Power 5 school, Vandy, Purdue, Iowa, and Minnesota. Oh, he was not shy. He was not shy about saying, Purdue, quit playing us because we beat them. I thought that was quite bold of coach, but he said it's actually been challenging <laughs> to find coaches. And you're right. He says that we appreciate coaches playing us. You know, it's good. It's good for them, too. Like, we're a top 100 team. We're not going to hurt you on the schedule. So I, I think the respect comes from, hey, you know, we are a team that we're going to be a good win on your schedule. Come the end of the year, the NCAA is going to look at us and say, all right, if you got beat by a good Ball State team, that's not bad for you. A team that definitely competes. You already mentioned it in the open. They played Notre Dame earlier this season to no prevail. But a nice ditch on the inside. That one going to Leah Tuging once again. How well is the ball flowing right now for Pitt? The interior passes because once you get past the first level of guards, the post players have to step up and guard you, right? And then the Pitt, Pitt's post players are getting just into the pocket as finally Ball State breaks through this game. And that's a good way to do it, to get inside. But they got to step up their defense. 
So on this side for Pitt, though, you would assume that Leah King gets another touch. She already has six points in this ball game. Behind the back by Amy Hayford, she dishes it out. Short shot clock. Lee Tu King gets it with two on the shot clock and gets another one, Brooke. I think the defensive assignment has to be a little bit different on King. Well, you saw how patient she was, right? She waited, understood the double team was coming, and then kind of made her move reading the defense. That was a beautiful veteran move by King right there. Alex Richard. And the only two points for Ball State. Last attempt there, no good. You know the same. The defense is always going to give you a way to score. You have to either react if you see it right away, or if you don't, it's okay to hesitate and take a beat and just read their feet or their body and then go after it. And that's the sixth straight possession for Pitt with a bucket. And of course, that will lead to a timeout for Ball State. So everything rolling for the Panthers on a quick. 10-point lead to start the first quarter. Why pay over 100 bucks a month for cable? Four of their last four field goals, and this is what I mean. Watch Leah Two King's patience here. Here comes a double team, Maddie Bischoff, who decides to leave. You can't go when you're playing outside defense. Angel, where's she going? She didn't got to go home, but you got to get up out of the paint. And Leah Two King able to read that, double team, taking her time, and that to me is is evident of somebody who plays a patient game who we know grew up in a, in a household where she had to learn sign language as her first language and now here she is a, a d1 player at a big time acc school what a cool story absolutely coach white also talked about just her ability as a leader but not being that vocal leader it's just with her presence as you mentioned the poise that she has the consistency in that department and we're seeing it on display in the start of this game but going back to her she leads the team in scoring rebounds and blocks and definitely off to a good start out of the timeout though a foul is assessed to pit so at this point, Alex Richard has been that player that has been trying to get things going for Ball State. She'll take a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, coach really was high praise for Alex Richard and felt like she was just built with this God-given strength. So strong of a player. And she's, she loves to play physical. Not dirty, but physical. And he felt like he didn't have a good low post presence. And she's a local player from Avon, Indiana. A transfer from Butler, so she's got some, yep. some big East and big experience and has been a, a, a blessing for this team. Last game, she had seven points, three for eight from the field. Her season best is 11 points. Here we got a taste of, of big time what to eat, how to work out, how to be strong, all those great habits. And he said she's brought those into their weight as well as just a profane, get caught for foul. You can see the pressure that they're bringing to start this game, too, if you want some different results. Had to try some different things, and you can see the yeah. pressure on the other side. A lot of times, as you work. know, the, the teams that, that pressure don't like to be pressured themselves. So good job by coach to change it up a bit. Marley Washington couldn't get one off the glass, so that is a rarity to start this game and an empty possession for the Panthers. But Ball State costs it up once again. And that'll be a turnover, so Pitt will get the ball back. So it seems like, Brooke, the press has been giving Pitt something to look at. And that's exactly what they need to do. When, when you're not scoring and, and you feel like you need to slow the other team down, you have to become more aggressive on defense first. That's going to give you confidence on offense, no doubt. So Ball State changes strategy. They go to a, a great press, you know, enough to stay back, but also enough to disrupt. And that's where someone like Alex Richard is great, because she can run the floor quickly, get that steal. She's going to be down there leading the pack, ready to catch it. And she has all four points for Ball State. This is her second trip to the free throw line. And she's three for four. So Pitt seeing the full court press once again as they were off to that hot start. 10 of their 12 points from the paint. As you can see there, another paint touch. Or from the free throw line, they get the O board there. 
A foul assess underneath. This one to go against Ball State. So Pitt, as, as quickly and efficiently as they move the basketball, I think they, they look really good spacing and running this fast break. So they can get shots on the interior, I think, all day long. Where Ball State is going to have to meet them at the pass or just before it, start getting physical. And coach mentioned to us on Zoom the other day about how he had you know 15 fouls to give uh, with some major post players. So uh, that's their mentality. Like They are going to step up, face you, and, and this could exactly feel like a first round NCAA game. Ooh, well, already there's there. another foul. That was a screen that's going the other way. So that foul there, but you mentioned it. A couple of players for Ball State in his starting rotation already with two fouls. We'll go back to this one on Pitt. Yeah, a little, little extra chicken wing there on the right. Hutcherson's elbow came out. Got to stay still with those screens. Hutcherson picks up her first foul. Nice look on the interior, and you would almost think if Amber Brown turned around, she had an open layup on that end. You read my mind. Amber Brown, turn around. It's right there. What a great pass. Oh, good job, Shanice Lewis. And what you know, you want to kick out for a good shot. I see it, but see what you got first. You're, you're so close to the paint. That's, you know, when you have a little more court awareness with some more time, that's going to come naturally. Interior look, that's blocked. Good night. Nia Two King, who leads the team in blocks, gets one there. And Dejanette Harris trying to finish on the other end. Instead, will draw the foul. She'll get two at the free throw line. Leotu King, terrific help side. Look at that, stepping in and over. The timing, and then keeps it in bounds. That's such an important part of blocking shots. Inside that circle, I love the principle of verticality rules. So if they bump bodies, as long as she jumps straight up inside that circle, you guys, they can make contact. And King's athleticism, she stayed just enough away with her arms to get the block. And here they are at the free throw line, capitalizing on that defense. And can't connect on the first of the pair. We'll go to the leader in charge for Pitt in his fifth season, Coach Lance White. As you can see there, he has a lot of experience, 13 NCAA appearances. As far as and here he has a decent play. knack for talent, too. Finding talent, oh, not, is, that, is that, he's all right? He's not too shabby. <laughs> he definitely coached me at Florida State. And if we're talking about a team that has grown exponentially on the defensive end, they dropped the ball on that possession there, but he is all about defense, and that's something that he definitely instilled in us at Florida State. And you can see it. I mean, Pitt, Pitt came to disrupt. You can see the tides turning just a bit in Ball State's favor. Pitt scored in the first six possessions of, of this ball game. Had a 10-point lead at the first break. In the last five possessions, they've had three turnovers and have yet to hit a field goal. Ever since Ball State put that press in, it's knocked Pitt off their balance a bit. So I think you mentioned this with Coach White as well, just who's going to find ways to be that leader on the floor. He did say that Amber Brown was one of them, meaning a little bit more of her on this play. Leah Two King, who has definitely grown her game to hit that mid-range shot, can't connect. There's a fight on the baseline. And this will come up with a jump ball. So this is actually a timeout that is assessed. So as they step aside, we will do the same as well. Ball stayed coming, but right now, Pitt with the 12-7 advantage. Be thankful for the little moment. Pittsburgh up 12 to 7. However, they have not scored in their last four possessions. On the other side, Ball State applied that full court press. And it seems like they are getting a couple of things out of it that they like. And Ball State only shooting 22% in this game, Angel. And they're still only down five because they're making it ugly. I mean, even look at the rebound disparity right there. 
uh, Pitt four of nine. So they started off hot. As you mentioned, though, it's, it's been the press that's really bothered Pitt to try to find that flow again. So we give credit to Coach and, and Ball State for really changing it up and saying, all right, we're not going to let a quarter go by before we get it together. Oh, there's and Allie Becky making Allie. her entrance. Allie Becky, as you mentioned, has now entered the chat. She gets the first, <laughs> her first bucket of the ball game, makes it a one possession game. I love that type of player because you know this, when you when you get angry as a player, you, you can do one of two things. You're either going to get deflated or you're going to get inspired to play harder. And Becky, when she gets frustrated, gets inspired to play harder. See that move again, just a simple crossover. Oh, that looked a little like Jordan Bryan Russell last. You saw that left oh, hand wow. a little push off. I'm just saying the left hand push off. That was like, hmm, I remember that shot. You can see her stats on this side there. There's Mac all freshman team coming into the season as well. Just one of those players that everyone has their eye out on. She was in our open as they were close to a turnover at the top of the key. No three has threes have been made to this point. And how about the first one being knocked down for Ball State to tie everything up at 12. Now Ball State looking way more confidence on offense. A broken play, almost a turnover right, but instead they catch it and they're spaced well, so they're able to get that corner three. Selma knocking down the three on the other end. Right now, Ball State looking to add on to their run and do for the lead. They are now on a 13-0 run. So it took Ball State a minute to get it together in the Uwe Pui game, but here they are with the lead early on. Well, Saturday on ACC Network and the ESPN app, our college basketball doubleheader starts at 1 Eastern with Pitt hosting North Florida. Then Cornell squares off against Syracuse. The Orange have won the last 41 against the Big Red, dating back to 1969. How about that, Brooke? It's a long time. Hey, that's that's a minute. That's a minute. I, I wouldn't know anything about any of those time of timelines or anything like that. That's, that's... <laughs> But how about Ball State so far? I mean, their response early on, and again, I, I feel like it was Allie Becky. That crossover pull-up, you know, led to some more ball movement, some, some tougher defense, some good-looking three-point shooting. He was, he was ready for this game. So right now, they did at early say it was a three. Now they deemed it a two. As huh. We're under a minute here in the first quarter. Pitt got off to a red hot start, but it's been all ball state after the first break. And now coming out of that timeout, another turnover for Pitt. It is their fourth, their fifth rather, on the game. It's exactly what you don't want. Uh, execution out of the timeout. You, know, you spend so much time either designing play, you change your offense. So that's a deflating moment. You know, after you just lost the lead, you want to gain a play where you can get some, some confidence back. So about there. seven seconds as far as the difference between game clock and shot clock. A lot of contact underneath, and that's another turnover. The forearm came up from Amy Hayford. Hayford, 5'8", senior from the Netherlands, playing like a six-footer out there. Bam, you better get off. <laughs> get in position. <laughs> that was quite an impact there. Uh, we're going with them, I think, is... This a good stutter from Iceland. And the coolest thing I learned about Iceland Angel in their notes was that there's no mosquitoes there. Sign me up. I saw too that it's illegal to have any lizards or any tropical uh, pets as well. So, okay. That's very I'm down for that too. We'll, that's we'll get just more. fine. We'll have a nice break for that as we're approaching the last few seconds of this fourth, first quarter. Ball State with the two point lead. Get the ball underneath, and what a dish mm -hmm. as they take the two-possession lead to close out the quarter, and what a start for Ball State to finish off the first quarter. So Pitt led 12 to two at the six-minute mark. Since then, guess what? It's all Car Cardinals, 14-0 run as we head into the second. Since using Chime, this is the best opportunity to get the win. 
How about the Cardinals, too? Coming into this game, we already talked about offense meeting defense. 75 points, around 76, really, that they've scored per game. But right now, Pitt looking for some type of offensive flow. They haven't scored in the last 11 possessions and also six turnovers in that first quarter. And so a lot of different players are trying to attack. They're, they're doing the right things. They're going through the right motions. And this is sometimes where that cohesive top eight doesn't really work for you. And you need one or two alphas to be like, I'm going to break through the ice. You, you need that personality of Ali Becky. And it, and a bullet pass just seeps right through the hands. That would have been a nice energy play for Pitt to, to take on the other end. But yeah, right now you need the alpha to, to just take over. And Pitt doesn't have that right now. Well, they did throw a little bit of a press at them after that turnover. So they have seven turnovers on the day so far. And Ball State has scored seven points off of those turnovers. However, they do get another look after getting a steal in that last play. Look underneath, bounces around a little bit, but finally, for Brown, able to get on the board. Well, Pitt was able to fight through really good defense for Ball State off the screen in rows. They would hedge hard, show that NBA. Nice defense on the other end there. Remember Brown with the block. He's getting ball today. Oh, Ball so State. you mentioned that, Brooke. Brooke, as far as somebody that's going to step up and be that leader, Amber Brown was one of those players that coach said needed to be that person. You can see her get the bucket on one and the block on the other. Let's see if it continues. Charge call. That one's going to go against Annie Roush. That's a heads up play. You know, those, those are the types of plays that can easily, again, get you back in the game. And for Amber Brown, you mentioned her coach said, hey, she's our vocal leader. Coming off an ankle injury, though, so, you know, being vocal out there can sometimes be just as good as making a good play. You get everybody else to start chatting, and then you become intimidating. King got a nice look underneath. Rolled around a little bit. Pit still down two. Through the tent back iron, but another look for Roush underneath gets the old board. Also draws a foul. I really like the play of Annie Roush. The 6'3 senior from Ohio has been a starter since a, a sophomore, but now is more comfortable coming off the bench. And there, there's six, what's that man? Six woman. Uh, but she just is so impactful when she comes to the game. I mean, she plays, she plays as if she's just, just so hungry for more minutes. And you love that type of attitude. That's something that you definitely mentioned to coaches. That one sells out of bounds. He wasn't able to get the free throws there, but Roush, one of those players that has been consistent five points in their last game against IUPUI. Kui Kui, as she's mentioned. Well, all coaches say it the same way you do, so I'll just stick with that. <laughs> A steal underneath. But they couldn't convert. Amber Brown just kind of says, I'll take over from here. So she's been all over the floor for the Panthers. And they were lucky to not give up two points off that turnover. Amber Brown gets fouled, but she was slow to get up. And here's the steal and a, and a good chance for Becky to get Ball State two more points. Maybe made that shot harder than she needed to. You mentioned it, Brown just going coast to coast. It, and even though she got the foul, got herself to the line, as you mentioned, got up a little bit slow. When I see a lot, what I, what I see a lot, especially in the women's game, is why not take that opportunity for that two to four foot just pull up jump shot? Unless you're like, I'm going to go in for contact. I'm trying to get the end one. Sometimes going into traffic doesn't benefit you. Don't get that cross up. Ooh, just a little pull up. I love the mid range. I think those are better opportunities for better shots. Well, Brooke, we have quite the game on our hands as this one is at 16 all. A little under eight minutes to go in the second quarter. And now Pitt changing to his zone. So let's see how Ball State responds. Can they get the ball to the middle of the floor? Or can they get it to the short corner? You see Richard trying to get it in the middle. There he goes. So Ali Becky thought she had an advantage on the inside with Richard. Just a little short on the shot. So here comes Pitt.
Great to hear Ball oh, yeah. State talking on defense. They're doing a great job communicating. Hit so far. Over two from distance. Dallas S on the play. That one going against Marley Washinitz. That'll be her second personal foul. A nice look on the inside, Ooh. but just like that, that's two quick fouls by Washington. So that'll be her third. A little less than seven minutes to go just in the first half. That, that's a big deal. You know, she gets away with one swipe there. Second one, you need it, you need your help side. And that's a good play by Ball State to draw the help side away and out of the paint and allow your player to go one-on-one. -on -one. That's big. You know, for, for your point guard to go out with three fouls before the halftime, and find an answer now. She was directing the offense pretty well for Pitt. Ball State gets a bucket at one point, Brooke. They were only shooting 17% from the field. Now they're shooting 32% from the field, and it's been really how they've been able to get it on the inside. So you know what's weird is now it feels like they're shooting 80% and should be up by 10, and they're only up two <laughs> the way they've dominated this game. So it, it's been an interesting one. Uh, very dramatic for early on in the season here. So there's stoppage of play. We're still being told what happened underneath. Ooh, we got an elbow, inadvertent elbow here. Roush off the shot. Ouch. So Amy Hayford right now had to check out after that blow to the face. So we're being told that she is in the tunnel and maybe check out. We'll hopefully have an update on her when we come back. These rounds again was just solid defense, straight up wall. Meet her in the paint. She's not gonna give you any room. See Roush demanding the ball on the inside. Better give it to her, all that work she's been doing for you. And Pitt really forcing them to see if they could continue to be lights out from outside. That would no good. <laughs> Leah Two King. This is it back out. She had a hot start. Has cooled down since. He's seen a lot of different bodies coming at King in the paint. She had six of their first eight points. Bischoff. That's a tough play there for Bischoff. Thought she had the lane instead. Well, she passed before she looked, right? You know, you, you mm -hmm. got your, all your momentum moving forward, and that's where you got to take that extra extra beat. Stop. I mean, it's so fundamental. It's it's boring to talk about, but it's the truth. Stop, pivot, and make the chest pass. And Pitt has not scored in their last four possessions. They're right now on a 240 scoring drought. So these free throws might be a simple way for them to end that streak. So once again, Amber Brown, as we talked about being the team captain, brings the consistency as well coming into this one. 89 straight starts. And as far as us, our afternoon of women's basketball wraps up today with our featured matchup, Diamond Johnson, and number eight NC State host South Florida at Reynolds Coliseum. Coverage begins at 2 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. South Florida is not a team that you want to look past. They had a good win against Texas as well on the season already. But they'll have to go through the powerhouse of the ACC in NC State. Mm. Jose Fernandez always uh, up for a good schedule challenge himself. He loves yes. it. And as we see the game getting more and more international on every roster, including uh, one we're looking at right now with Ball State. 
can as, as well as Pitt. Jose's been doing that. <laughs> He's been doing rosters internationally for years, 20-something years. One on the shot clock, they'll have to heave it, can't. It and so that'll be another turnover for Ball State. Six turnovers for a Ball State right now. It's been a good one. We've been tied a few times in this ball game. 18 all, a little under five to go in the first half. Beck, who has on one shoe, Pitt, and on the other, H2P, which means hail to Pitt, as we mention her story. Growing up in a household where both of her parents were deaf, Leah Tu King, learning how to do sign language at nine months old. One of the stories that we could talk on and on about how that has impacted her life now on this team. You can see her mother there, Patricia Operum. I think the one thing that she picked out as well is just she has a nice swag to herself as well. Had the nice yellow and blue nails to match for today's game. Nails, eyeshadow, I just noticed the next time we saw her on camera. I mean, every time we show her, I see something something more. And so there's Leah, too. And you mentioned her story, just uh, just the, the incredible reach that she has in her story. Mm -hmm. Visiting the School for the Deaf at Pref Presley Ridge School. And so many students, they were able to engage with her, interact, and, and see you know, how hard you can work to, to really just change the environment that you're in. I mean, can you imagine the impact as a communicator that she's had on her team, knowing the, the household that she grew up in and how she had to learn to introduce herself to the world? I think that the one thing that you mentioned just now was the impact, and that was the biggest part to her, as this is the second annual uh, ASL Deaf Awareness Game. She talked about last year how people were reaching out to her after seeing the story and saying thank you. So wanting to do more, um, obviously, for her community and how uh, her going back to Presley Ridge School to give back and, and some of the footage that we saw from that was absolutely breathtaking and really awesome to see how this game is just, it goes beyond basketball for these athletes and how she's made her impact in her community. Well, basketball is, is a game of, of talking, you know, mm -hmm. chemistry, talking, and in addition to the X's and O's. And so when you, you are able to communicate in a way that isn't vocal, you're, you're really able to show that with your body language and that a lot of times speaks for itself. So. Being able to speak different languages and, and see different perspectives, you know, those types of things always blend well for your team. And uh, Coach was just so complimentary. Coach White said that she's the most cerebral kid I've ever coached. She's brilliant. She's thoughtful on how she communicates. And when I hear her voice, I feel better. That's incredible. Any, any player would want their coach to say that. So the fact that she has that nod is simply I know awesome. that's not what my coach said. <laughs> <laughs> he, that's not he, he how was he was my, <laughs> he was my coach, and he definitely didn't bring my name up as on the other side. <laughs> what a beautiful look for Alex oh, Richards yes. as they regain the one point lead. She has that real quick move, you know, kind of that, that bouncy, hezzy, low post. And as soon as you, you she feels you off balance, she's quick to turn and get under your shoulder and then finish in the low post. How about Pitt so far in this ball game? A hot, cold start for them. The first six possessions, they had 12 points. Now in the last 27 points, only one for 13 from the field. And it's been a big part because they found some type of way to contain Leah Tu King. She does draw the foul there. Get two at the charity strike. Yeah, you have to stick with the double team. And, and here's a nice interior pass. Good catch too. Richard catches it. In the low post, has to make a move again. Little hezzy one-two step, gets all the way in the left side of the circle to finish. And, and you can just see the way that, that she stands and carries herself, how committed she is to, to fitness. Because that's the one thing Coach really stressed was that she took it to a professional level. And when you are able to do it at a consistent level like that, the discipline it takes, you see how it transfers into your game. She can't be moved. Coach said she just does a little bit of everything for us on the floor and another player that just whether it's in the classroom or on the floor he can rely on at any given time. Free throw good for Pitt which makes it another tie ball game but how about the second three going down for Ball State. Once again we'll be saying this probably the rest of the half going back and forth with another three point lead. 
Yeah, I'm not sure that was the right spot to give the ball to Leah Tu King, even though she was trailing the break there. And she can, she's comfortable in the catch and shoot. I don't know that she was ready to receive it. And so he felt like that shot was a bit hurried. So Dejanette Harris gets her first field goal of the ball game after we featured her in the open coming off of the bench for this one. You can hear Coach White hollering, no middle, no middle, trying to keep Ball State to the corners. How about Leah Tukey showing some point forward? Mm -hmm. Strickland back iron. I know this is a, we're, we're comparing to a, a, a fantastic player, but I get John Paul Jones vibes from her. Am I, am I way off? Am I on there? I just feel like she's got a little bit of her game to her. You got John Quill Jones, most improved player one year, then the sixth woman of the year, then an all-star and MVP player the following year. So what I think I like about your comparison <laughs> the most is that she progressed to that point. Yes. And I can say that Leah Tu King has been one of those players that has progressed within her career. You can see flashes of it, right? Like you can see her yeah. eagerness to get better and the fundamentals are there. And so yeah, there's so much potential. And, and that's one thing I, I, oh, oh, wait a minute now. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Stop you in your tracks, Ellie. Stop Becky her. with the snatch and score. Come on, Becky with the good shot. Let's go. <laughs> what a step back three. We're, we got to nominate that for SC Top 10. That was sick. Allie Becky with five points and all five of those points. Very flashy. Has he? Ooh, behind the back step. Oh, that's going to be a two, though. I think that's yep. a two. Oh, Ooh, look at Dejanette. She said she's pushing me off. <laughs> she got the Brian Russell, too. I told you, <laughs> Becky is out there doing it with her left. She's getting away with it, but there's a little push off that left hand. You already talked about her possibly getting in the top 10. Well, that's within her resume. She had a top 10 play against Buffalo. She hit the half part shot against them at the halftime. So they eventually went on to win that ball game. We'll see what they can do here. Oh, the two king on the board, though, with the Euro. Great move. And again, just played patiently. The defense fell right into her hand. Shot fake and then took the extra dribble to split the defense to get a clean layup. So Leah Tu King, the only player on both sides in double figure, she has 11 and four for nine from the field. A little less than a minute to go here in the first half. Travel called against Ball State. That'll be their eighth. So Ball State not doing themselves any favors with some of these unforced turnovers. And they have a two point lead. They're shooting 35%, 30% from three, 50% from the free throw line, and they still have a two point lead. That's incredible. Ball State won the first period 16 to 12 right now. Pitt winning that department 14 to 10 in the second, as we're tied up at 26 with 30 seconds left in the first half. So Leah Tu King, her ears must have been burning because she has been on a tear in this second part of the second quarter, 13 points for her. She was held at eight for quite some time. Trey ball. Uh, P uh, ball State answering the call, but Pitts, Leah Tu King, yeah, she decided to try to make something happen. Oh, speaking of. The block <laughs> from Dazenette Harris. That's why they're one of the top defensive teams in the ACC when you have players that don't give up on a play. She said, I see your buzzer beater, and I top you with a block buzzer beater. <laughs> but getting back on defense, the hustle. Can't get a shot off. Well, Brooke, we've seen everything within this first half as Ball State has a three-point lead over Pitt. We've been tied five times, three lead changes, but at the end of the day, Ball State has been phenomenal from the floor. They're shooting 36%. Now Ball State with a three-point lead here. They came to play. This is a big-time game, Angel. But they are needed in this ballgame. Yeah. 
So coming into this ball game, Pitt had the advantage as far as the series. They enter with a 4-0 advantage in Ball State. They must got wind of that one because they're trying everything in their power to change it. And they get the three ball to start as they build on their three-point lead. Now a two-possession game for Pitt. Amy Hafer can't respond with a three of her own. You see more of a sense of urgency for Ball State getting the ball in transition. Quick dish out and back-to-back -back threes to start the second half. Ali Becky with eight points. She had a few highlights in the first half. Had a nice three that was indeed confirmed to be a three. The officials, Carla Fountain, Ashley Gloss, and Ryan Durham stepped aside to see if that was indeed a two or a three as there's a tie up on the baseline with Malia Johnson. We were talking three, so we might as well talk about how it's been raining in the peat. This is the first one that goes down for Becky. Bottom of the net for her. She had five points at the half, now sitting at eight. And another one, back-to-back, -back, Madeline Bischoff, who is averaging close to 10 points per game in this season. Knocks down the tree of her own. Last game, she had four points. Has been a player out of Indianapolis. Indiana has been huge as far as the culture build for Coach Sally at Ball State. So that three just a bit short, sails out of bounds, and that means Pitt will get it back, and Ball State will get some time to set up in their defense. Marley Washington, who had some foul trouble in the first half, will bring it up the floor for the Panthers. She's sitting with three fouls. Amy Hayford gets a nice look on the roundabout. And gets a nice clear path to the right. It was about neck and neck as far as both teams and how they've been able to score from the field. Pitt scoring or shooting 37% from the field as well as Ball State shooting 39%. But the key here is Ball State has already hit six threes. Pitt, who found some ways to be a little bit more balanced with the three, cannot quite match what Ball State has been able to do in this ball game as they extend their lead to eight. Amber Brown trying to work the left side, doesn't. Second chance opportunity, it's a lot of contact, but instead of the foul being called, this is an offensive foul. This one's going against Amy Hafer. Amy Hafer picks up her second personal foul. That's her third turnover on the day as well. So as much as we talk about the offense for Ball State and how they've improved after that pretty slow start of the ball game, their defense showing an incremental improvement. And their best rebounding performance of the season against the Billikens out rebound at St. Louis 45 to 29. And Coach Sally mentioned how the defensive aspect is extremely important for them. But they cough up the ball there. Have a substitution as we see Alex Richard check into the ball game. As Murray Kiefer will take a seat. Washington's can't connect for the first three for the Panthers, and they've struggled for shooting from deep. A nice inside look and a nuts in one as Alex Richard checks in and gets the bucket to go for the N1. Alex Richard now with nine points, three for seven from the field and has been on a tear on the inside. She gets the bucket and the foul. Like most Ali Becky with eight points, only five points at the half, but she'd had energy buckets to keep Ball State in this ball game. In the first half, we've talked about how many times it's gone back and forth. We've been tied five times, three lead changes, as Pitt sees the full court press once again from the Cardinals. Leah Johnson can't connect from outside, and so 
More struggles. 0 for 6 from 3 for the, the Panthers. Dish out, Dejanette Harris. Doesn't get the lift, but another old board for Pitt. That's their eighth on the day. Leah Two King works the left side. Another old board. So the shot clock resets. King at the top. Can't connect on this one. And this time, Ball State has seen enough, and they'll head off into their transition. Quick look on the inside. And how about that? Alex Richard has been the hot hand in a quick timeout. And it's because Ball State has been on fire. On an 8-0 run over the last two minutes of play, Panthers looking for an answer. Appreciate your, your patience and your hard work, partner. Thank you for holding it down in my absence. I am with I, you the rest of the way, I promise. I missed it, but how about a bucket from Pitt right out of the timeout? And it was much needed because Ball State, up 13 before that timeout, went on an 8-0 run. And it's because of the threes, Brooke. Like, when they started this game, they were one for six. Since, six for nine from beyond the arc. So we'll see what they can get out of this one. Instead, they cough it up. Amy Hayford with the steal and a foul on the Cardinals. And as difficult as they're making Pitt's two-point game, Pitt has yet to even hit a three in this game. They're 0 for 7. So in essence, you're, you know, you're trading twos for threes, and Ball State has taken a commanding presence, a very confident presence in this game. They're dictating everything, the pace, you know, the spacing, all of it. I want to revisit the fact that Coach Sally for Ball State is not going to shy away from playing Power 5 schools. That's another bucket for Pitt. But he's already taken down Vandy, Purdue, Iowa, and Minnesota. And he's been at Ball State. A look on the inside denied by Amber Brown, the vocal leader for the Panthers. You can tell that timeout was much needed for the Panthers. So Ball stayed with the lead, but the Panthers trying to protect the Pete as they're working their way back with 4.43 left in the third. Auto owners, insures your car. Because sometimes... Right. I know that you were busy uh, probably putting your uh, star on top of your tree, but to start <laughs> off the third quarter, <laughs> they hit back-to-back -back threes that really just... Gave them the energy they needed. At one point, they were up 13 points as the Panthers continue to still struggle from outside. They have yet to hit a three. They're 0 for 8 from distance. I'm seeing, so while I was downstairs decorating, I have YouTube <laughs> TV on downstairs, the ACC network. So I heard your call and watched the threes as I was finding my star, putting it up there, running back up here. So a little multitask. Love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Harris need a three takes, took some time, Brooke, but the three ball just hasn't been able to connect, and you alluded to it earlier. Threes, obviously, if we can do the math at home, more than twos, but that's the only thing that Pitt has been able to work with the last few possessions. They're two of their last ten. And right now they're third in the ACC in three-point percentage. Like, they've made that a, a point to get better. That's a nice, easy play. Amber Brown finishing again. Looking for that leader. It's got to be Brown. It's got to be King and Harris. The rest of this game, they need to take command of the offense. So a quick 6-0 run in the last two minutes for Pitt. On the other side, Ball State missed the last four field goals for themselves. So when you're looking at the game of runs, you mentioned it, but as far as the three ball, that just seems to work in the favor of the Cardinals. Ball State right now, leading third quarter with 14-10 advantage. <laughs> Get a nice look Sneaky. underneath. They are a crafty bunch. Ball State, they're, they're, 
their heads are always in the game looking for the edge because as a team, you know, as a mid-major, you have to play with that kind of mentality. And you have to play with a chip on your shoulder, especially against a big power school like this. And you have to act as if you, you're being disrespected, even if you aren't. You have to play like it. Nice and one. So you said play with a chip on your shoulder. Harris has seen enough. Look at this play, though. Heads up. Okay, so the second top 10 nomination in one game, Ali Becky. Balances it off the back. Harris has a great, great uh, job getting low with the defense. Shoulders there, turning her body. And that's the fist pump play. That's the energy play. Still, they need it. If they're not going to get threes, this is a possibility to get a three point play. The and one always works well. So it's a six point ball game. Seeing a half court, half court press from Pitt. Corner three, let go. Bischoff couldn't connect. Roush fouled on the play. So Gabby Hutcherson. That's her third personal foul. Hutcherson's had a tough day. Three fouls in four minutes. So Roush knocks down the first one in. As far as ACCPM with Mark Packer, Trey Boston and Taylor Tannebaum, they'll talk football, but we'll also have the latest from around the conference. Weekdays at 4 Eastern right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Something of note, Brooke. A couple of bowl games have already been called. Pitt taking on number 18 ranked UCLA December 30th in the Sun Bowl. So it'll be interesting to see how that goes down for Pitt like a fun matchup. I, I like this season. A lot of good games. Mix it with some good basketball, some NBA on Christmas Day. And yep. all of that. Pitt controlling the pace at this point. Dejanette Harris is a big part of it, and you can see why. Changing gears, Dejanette Harris. From 100 to zero real quick. <laughs> she just crossed her up. Yeah, you see that now? She's got the energy. See how it's, it's bleeding into her teammates, grabbing them, talking to everybody. Which is another little one-two. I like it. Whoop. Hold up. Jump stop. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. So instead of trying to make a difficult fadeaway layup, you know, that might make a high right reel, if you make it, make the easy play. Stop and pop. Good decision. Two, two possession game for the Panthers. As you can see, Dejanette Harris now has eight points. We've seen a different spark from her ever since that Ali Becky three. She's been a little bit more aggressive on the offensive end. But at one thing too, Brooke, that I want to go back to, when we featured Harris in the open, the first clip that we showed was her attentiveness in the huddle. Now she's that extension of coach on the floor. Unfortunately, they are turnover for the Panthers. That'll be their 11th. Yeah, Harris is a freshman, had to take on the point guard position. Coach basically said we had to throw her to the wolf. So she's really grown in her game. And as you see, she can manage and handle the offense. But if you give her an opportunity to score or if the offense is lagging, I love it. She's a, a take charge kind of player. And that's a big bucket for the Cardinals. They were one for the last seven before the tray. It's in their lead to seven. Player off the bench who can come in and, and hit a three-point shot. That is so valuable. Hit 0 for 10. Oh, okay. From three, Ball State knocks down their ninth triple of the ball game. Excuse me, Sydney Schaefer. She said, let me just feel comfortable in transition on the pull-up. Like, that's a heat check. Four different players have hit triples on the day for Ball State. We'll take you to relive this one. Ball State at one point I think was like 18, 17% from three. They're now at 43%. And three players have hit two or more threes in this game. Talk about a turnaround. Last minute of play here in the third quarter. 
Asianette Harris all over the floor, working for an extra possession. That might make the highlight real. But another turnover for Pitt that just can't convert off of a hustle play. I know what Sidney Schaefer's come in this game and done. Hit two threes and a steal in just a couple minutes' time. She's been in the game 11 minutes. Harris left alone from three, less than 10 seconds to go, and short ironed it. Five seconds that Ball State has to work with. The hesitation at the top of the key clanks it, and a missed opportunity for Madeline Bischoff to close out the third quarter. So Ball State taking care of business in the third quarter, owned it 24 to 17. But there's no bigger news than Brittany Griner, who was just recently freed and returned home on Friday. The other side, you see this, you, you have to acknowledge having her back home is a sigh of relief. So definitely sending our prayers to her, her family. I know the, the WNBA family as well has said we're going to give her space and make sure that her mental health is most important and priority. So her getting back on the floor is not top of the conversation at this point. Just happy to see her home. Oh, just, just amazing, outstanding news. And, and congratulations just, just on having such a, a huge moment and being able to come through for uh, just the biggest news, as you mentioned, in women's basketball. So for her to be able to get a good night's sleep, get some meals, get some rest, get some love and attention from her friends and family is, as you mentioned, the most important. So we are just so excited, BG, to have you back. And yes, the triple doubles are quite amazing. It, remember when it used to be a, a rarity to have a triple double angel? Now it's right on, on the regular. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I never had a triple-double in my career, so I know how hard that is when you're looking in a career, but we talk Turnovers, about Caitlin maybe. Clark. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, that, I'm not going to say that. Me, me. We're going to pull up the footage. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a very interesting stat. We were talking about the triple-doubles overall with Caitlin Clark just being at the forefront in this season. She has seven, but how about for the history books? Sabrina Unescu with 26 triple doubles leads the NCAA. Come on, how many? 26? 26. That is incredible. She just, she showed so much progress and, and potential watching her as a McDonald's All-American. And so her influence on the game is the reason I think you see a lot more players who can give you the triple double in the regular. But yeah, Olivia Miles doing it at Notre Dame amongst the greats in the point card name. Neil Ivy leading them. How, how much uh, pleasure I'm sure she gets out of coaching Olivia every day. Also, the reigning player of the week for the ACC. Definitely have to give the nod to Tania Latson out of Florida State, who has just swept all freshman of the week accolades. It's been on a tear at one point, was averaging 30 points, and has been a problem for every opponent as far as Pitt. Just a two possession game, working their way back into this one. Ball State has yet to score in this quarter as Pitt outscoring them 6-0 here in the fourth. Now Pitt behind Nation at Harris, and she's, she's coming up tenderly after that drive. And you see her with the ankle brace on her left ankle there. She's trying to walk that off. I wonder if she perhaps tweaked it on that last, on that last play. So you mentioned it with Coach White as well, tweaking that gate, that ankle in the previous game on Wednesday. So just kind of walk it off. But if you ask her or question her about her ability on the floor as far as her strength, she's tough as nails. Mm -hmm. Knocks down second as well. So just a two point game as Pitt taking care of business so far to close out the fourth quarter. But Dejanette Harris is checked out and will seek attention from the trainer on the side. We saw the trainer immediately giving her some liquids and Dejanette laying down and kind of putting that, that leg up to get some stretching. So you hope it's not the ankle, maybe just some cramping that's bothering her. In and out three for Bischoff. Immediately, Amber Brown asking for the ball. Gets the bump, gets the bucket as well. How about Amber Brown right now? Also has a double-double on the day, 14 points and 10 rebounds. 
described as a ferocious rebounder. And I love the way she ferociously demanded the basketball. Good help side there from Brown. Go ahead and lead the break. A lot of versatile players on the roster this year for Coach White. And a turnover kind of stops that momentum there. Coach White not too thrilled about that one. Good move. But getting her body into the paint, taking that contact in the fadeaway. And the, my favorite part, though, is the look after. I don't know if we can get her reaction. Oh, yeah. A little flex on him. This is when you start to, to get bigger as a player because you grow in these moments. It's a tight game against a team that is competitive. But if you're pit, like, you should win this game now. You cannot look back and be like, we let a Ball State team come into our house and beat us on our floor. No way. A look underneath will give Ball State the two-point lead once again. As we're approaching the halfway point here in the fourth quarter. And it's the first time Ball State scored in this quarter. It tells you Pitt's defense, you know, everything we talked about in the open is starting to come true. They're making it hard. But it really does come down to the rebounds. We've seen a couple of times, times how offensive rebounds have gone in the favor of, of Pitt. Right now they have the advantage 10 to 9. Not a big disparity, but every rebound matters. They're plus 5. You see 37 to 32. Just a couple more offensive boards. But that was Coach's biggest concern for Ball State was the inconsistency in their rebounding. He said we want to be less Jekyll and more Hyde. Another thing that he said to add on to that was just how pleased he was with them locking in on the game plan. She mentioned it, rebounding has to be better. This is a good test for them. And nobody wants to rebound when you're tired. You, you know, it's not something that just comes naturally to you. You have to make a concerted effort to do it. Not sure Pittsburgh is number one in the league as far as rebounds. Probably with a few inside presence. But defense still a major factor for the Panthers as there is a foul assess against Ball State. Marie Kiefer too late on that help. You want to try to get there as the pass is coming, and she met King at the moment of contact. Well, we've been talking about rebounding. Let's dive into it a little bit more. You see the last six seasons. Coach White and how he's tried to continue to make improvements in that department. Well, if you're not better on the boards, you're just not going to win games. And I'm sure that that was a message you received daily at Florida State. <laughs> and re rebounding will win you championships. It's it's nothing that's glamorous, but man, it gets you the dub. How were you as a rebounder? Were you all right? Uh, hey. Hey, I was one of the, the team's leading rebounders. I tell you okay that. Now. Coach White did not stand for it, and I wanted to be on the floor as much as possible. <laughs> and that's how I knew I could find a spot on the floor. Nice dispatch on the inside in the end one. Brooke, Alex Richard was the primary focus at the beginning of the game. Her ability to roll has been outstanding in the second half. What a great pass, threading the needle, the screen and roll. Good job rolling to the basket, Richard. Yeah, she's big time energy again. She's coming from a program at Butler, so she's played against some big schools before. This is not a moment that she's shying away from. Very competitive, strong player. So already one player has fouled out for Pitt. Marley Washington's. Last one going against Harris. So Panthers will be able to get it back. How about Alex Richard, though, with her season high? You talked about how she's been able to just adjust in her new role at Ball State, but her season best prior was 11 points at Tennessee Tech. That's a nice move. There's Harris with the spin. Her explosive speed catches you so off guard. And she can she can hide it well. She doesn't have that game face move where you know your face gets big before you cross over or make a move. She just gets you. 
solid player, very balanced as far as her crossover, as you alluded to. Richard might have been deflected on that one. We'll see who they will say the ball is going to. So they're still trying to figure out which side or who has possession. As the Cardinals were walking towards the other way, but the officials now on the same page and give it to them under the basket. Bounce pass to Richard. Once again, gets fouled. You see how Ball State, especially on out-of-bounds plays, he has not been ready to defend. So this is Richard's third trip to the free throw line. She already has her season high, 14, and continues to build on it. All right, well, we've seen some amazing fans across the ACC, and now we need your help. This winter, ACC Network wants to experience each sport from your perspective. So snap a pic or take a video, tag it with hashtag all the devotion, and post it to your social. You just might see it on the ACC Network. How about that? So Richard misses the free throw and then picks up her foul. That is her third. So if you're pit, you go right back at her. I mean, there's she is a problem for you in this game, and you need to get her on the bench. So with three, pit, or I'll say I should say has a few players with three fouls, but as Coach said before, like he has 15 to 20 fouls to use in a game like this. Less than four minutes ago, here in the fourth quarter, Ball State with a three-point lead. And they wanted the jump ball there underneath. And Anna Clefane, not too thrilled with the call on the play. Pitt now in the bonus. So they'll see two free throws the rest of the way. So then not the first one by Malia Johnson goes down, and it's just a two-point ball game. And can't connect on the second. This will go back to the Cardinals. One's knocked out of bounds. So four different players so far, double figures for Pitt. Here's King, Brown, and Johnson. Seen a burst from them here in the second half. Pitt outscoring the Cardinals 13 to five so far in the fourth quarter. Five on the shot clock, mid-range shot goes up. No good, Amber Brown comes down with the rebound. Amber continuing to build on her season high performance. Already has a double-double, first of the season. And another O board for the Panthers. Leah Two King couldn't get it. No, no foul or no call or whistle on that first strip. So everyone just stopped. But Amber Brown, or actually Leah Two King, was able to clean up the play. So Amber Brown. Amber Brown will be able to step up to the free throw line. It almost looked like Leah Two King, but she was actually able to clean up for Leah Two. So gets two free throws here. Could tie the ball game for the seventh time of the day. The August daughter, as well as Clefane, had four fouls for Ball State. Misses the second. And we have a jump ball with the arrow going towards the Cardinals. Full court. We've seen from Pitt throughout this ball game one point difference with less than three minutes to play. 
Three ball, no good. And a much needed rebound by Malia Johnson goes down. So we're approaching the two minute mark in this ball game and it's gone back and forth so far. Pitt has been able to dominate in the fourth quarter with the 14 to five advantage. Ball State looking to build on their one point lead, draws the foul. And so two free throws at bay for Ball State and a Clefane. Step up to the free throw line for the first time of the day. Still looking for her first points as well as she's sitting with some foul trouble at four. So another player for Pitt fouls out. Ms. Hayford will now exit the ball game. She had four points, one for three from the field. Knocked out both of her free throws. One thing that she was able to do well, though, was get on the boards, had five rebounds for the squad. Clefane misses the first of the pair. Coming in at a 76% free throw shooter, knocks down the first one, the second one. So Clefane, Clefane, only one point on the day. She has 885 points. Looking to become that 10th player with 1,000 at Ball State. How about the nice look on the inside? First we saw Leah Two King to start off the ball game on the inside presence, but now Amber Brown continues to build on her double-double and ties this at 59. Approaching the 92nd mark. Cardinals looking for a bucket. They've missed their last four field goals, and they are right now in a three-minute scoring drought, so there will be a timeout, just so everyone's on the same page for Coach Sally and his crew. Well, Saturday on ACC Network and the ESPN app, our college basketball doubleheader starts at 1 Eastern with Pitt hosting North Florida. Then Cornell squares off against Syracuse. The Orange have won the last 41, yes, I said 41, against the Big Red. That's dating back to 1969. We'll see if they can get some different results this go round. But as far as today, we've got a great one at the Pete, honoring a lot of different things for the Panthers as we continue to acknowledge Jimmy B week. But also for the Panthers, their second annual ASL death awareness game. We saw their warmups that had Pitt in sign language. And now they're trying to fight to protect home court as they have a five game homestand. This is the second of that stretch. How about Dejanette Harris coming up with a huge rebound? And we'll see what was called here. I think it was a foul and Becky, not too thrilled about that call. Becky, only with her second personal. So you can see the fight from Dejanette Harris, pretty much one on three, tries to send it up. And I think Becky may have an idea there. There wasn't much contact on the play. And the thing that hurts the most is the fact that that foul puts Pitt at the line and also gives them the one point lead as Amber Brown knocks down one. Forced error, Ali Becky, I'm sure, to want that play back. It opened up like the Red Sea, slow to get up as she took a tumble through a couple of the chairs behind the stanchion. So at the top of the key, Panthers might have gotten away with a little bit of a foul against Becky as she went flying out of bounds. So that's the 16th turnover for the Cardinals. And at a time that they were looking to take advantage 
to regain the lead. We've seen four different lead changes in this ball game already as we're sitting at 103 to close this one out. And a mule checks in for Ball State. As the momentum has definitely shifted towards the Panthers. With the Cardinals in a four minute scoring drought. Dejanette Harris has been all over the floor trying to see if she can get another possession. Instead, it'll go back to Ball State with 39 seconds left in this ball game. Both teams are in the bonus. Ball State has one timeout, as well as Pitt. Richard wanted it underneath. She gets it, and she draws the foul. As that was just passed over the head of Leah Tu King. So 6 1 going at six foot. And Richard continues to just be dominant on the inside. Calling for it, gets it. Harris tried to see if she could slow things down, but a foul assessed. And Ball State has an opportunity to regain the lead with 21.6 left on the game clock. Team shooting 70% from the free throw line that rolls around about every spot of the rim and eventually finds its home at the bottom of the net, tied at 60. Can't connect on the second, and Amber Brown is able to tip the ball to herself, calls a timeout, and Pitt will have 19.9 to work with. So just to revisit this history series, Pitt owning the series at 4-0. And Ball State definitely has been fighting their largest run was 14-0. And their largest lead was 13. That was in the third with about five minutes left in the ball game. They were sitting at 43 to 30. But that brings us to the fourth quarter, which is the most important quarter in a close ball game. And it's been all hit. They have outscored Ball State 17 to 7. And with a tied ball game sitting at 60, they have 19.9 to work with. No more timeouts for Pitt. Ball State has one left. And both teams are in the bonus. So it'll be interesting to see who the hot hand will go to. Amber Brown has been huge down the stretch, but as you can see at the bottom of your screen, Dejanette Harris has been on a tear in this second half. 13 points, she's one of four players in double figures so far. Shanice Lewis has the ball at the top of the key. Transfer from Maryland, trying to assess when to attack and to get in their set. King. Going at Richard. And guess what? This one's going into overtime. Richard with a sigh of relief as this one was one of those games where you wanted to see who was going to hit the last shot. Guess what? We get more time in this one, of course. Great ball game at the peak. More minutes. Ball State just two for 13 in the fourth quarter as we will reset everything for five more minutes of play. So the Panthers 
Start off halftime with the Rock. Johnson tried to see if she could get something at the rim, but going against Alex Richard probably isn't the best bet. She's been holding down the fort, protecting the paint for Ball State all game. As they'll try their hand for the first points of an overtime. An open look, but no avail. for Bischoff as full steam ahead. Amber Brown was having the night of her life. 18 points, 15 rebounds, and has been efficient from the floor. Six for eight, seven for nine rather, and has really put this team on her back. Corner three, and they have gone ice cold from distance. So as far as ice cold, they have the nine threes, but went 0 for 4 from beyond the arc in the fourth quarter. Pump fake and a block call. How about the end one for Leah Two King? That's just a savvy play. And as Brooke mentioned, just knowing when and where, never rush, never in a hurry to get to her spot on the floor, gives Pitt the four point lead, but can't connect to finish the play. Still at the top of the key, Johnson. Doesn't get the layup, but right now the four point lead for Pitt. You see Allie Becky trying to reason with the officials a bit, but right now Ball State still looking for their four first points of overtime. Ball State, fourth game in nine days, trying to see if they can finish off before their eight day break. And Richard gets the first two of overtime for Ball State. That went in and out from distance for Pitt. Seeing a little bit of a zone from Pitt. given the Cardinals some issues as they work with a short shot clock. Five that they have to work with at the top of the key. Clefane turn it down, but ties this one at 64 with 2.13 left in the ball game. Three players in double figures for Ball State. Almost gets the turnover there. Seven to work with for the Panthers. Lewis asked for the screen. Tried to see if she could work with something at the top of the key. Instead, has a turnover. That's the 16th for the Panthers. Just to revisit the timeout situation, Ishim is given one in overtime, so Pitt called their last timeout in the fourth quarter. They still have one left in the ball game. Ball State with two. 145 to left, 130 rather left in the ball game. And how about the three that goes down? Bischoff hits her third three of the ball game. Now she's sitting at 13. Rolls out for Lewis. Clean up play for Leah Two King. Allie Becky is just going to slow the pace a bit for Ball State. They have the one point lead with less than a minute now to play. 
Ball State seven and two coming into this one. Pitt six and three as there's a foul called on the play. Or rather, turn over here as you can see the three ball being knocked down by Madeline Bischoff, 5 for 9 sophomore out of Indianapolis, as we've been mentioning her throughout the ball game, shooting 30% from distance this season. And we'll go to Ball State. So Ball State gets the ball back with 27 left on the game clock. About four second difference between the shot clock. You can see Ali Becky has been in charge of the rock for Ball State this entire game. Ali Becky with 10 points, two triples at the top of the key. Calls a number for a three, rims out. And Amber Brown with the rebound. Another timeout called for Lance White as they have the last possession once again with seven seconds to play here in overtime. Since I Career double-double, her first double-double of the season has completely taken over in this ball game. She's done a little bit of everything. As you can see, rolling to the bucket, finding contact, finishing for and ones, and definitely has been that leader on the floor in huddles for her team as they're trying to see if they could take the lead with seven seconds left. So this ties her career high with 20 points. She's been dominant on the boards. She has 16 rebounds on the day as well. So in regulation, the fourth quarter to end that one, the Panthers had the last time out, 19 seconds to work with. And now they're sitting at seven seconds left in overtime. We'll see if they drop something different this go round. Now the situation is a little bit different. It was tied 60-60. And now Ball State has the one point advantage with seven seconds left. Right away, Amber Brown is given the ball. This is knocked away. And how about Anna Clefane able to track it down? One point, one left. And just two centimeters off for Amber Brown to get it over the rim. A foul is assessed in Ball State. Can build on it. You can see back here, Amber Brown got a nice look, just not enough lift. And Anna Clefane tracks it down. She's now at the free throw line. Has three points, one for two in the ball game. Knocks down the first. So the Panthers, four and one at home. She misses the second one on purpose. And you can see here how Ball State walks away with their sixth straight win and taking down first Power Five game team of this season. So the final score, 68-66. Ball State with an upset win over Pitt. We'll send it to Ben Schulman.